Mufti Australian Sheikh Hablas was caught on camera during a sermon saying that a person who 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 well, does not commit themselves to salah is worse. What is worse than someone who prays and commits other sins? Can you explain? Ah, right. Okay. So, so first of all, shukran for the super chat. May Allah bless you, keep you smiling. Shukran. Amin. Amin. You see, uh, yeah, I think what you're talking about is an old, quite an old clip. Um, if I recall correctly, because I think at the time I made a Facebook post on it, and that was way before I used to, there were any such thing as Facebook Lives. So it must have been, I think we're talking around um, probably, I don't know, what was that, like maybe 2015 or maybe something like that. So talking a long time ago, I take, oh, reasonably, when I say long, okay, relatively. So there was a clip where he had said certain things. And so I don't know whether he still, you see, so has said that. I I did hear from certain people that he uh, regretted saying that. And it's not that, I, Allahu A'lam, I heard something like that from some people a while ago, years ago, that he did want to take it down. I think he took it down, but people have shared it, so he can't really... Um, do anything about that and I don't know but look see that I guess is one of the problems of the internet as well you know this ever seeing eye and the panopticon and this uh, the, the modern Keramun Katibin <laughs> it's the internet which is a disaster because unlike in Allah's realm you see th there's mercy there's infinite mercy but the court of public opinion <laughs> this one not nice but what was being said then was disastrous and uh calamitous and it was you know nothing short of a cataclysmic um you know just uh yeah so it was what was being said was if a person was the worst person ever if a person was a murderer a rapist a drunkard a, a alcoholic a drug drug addict, a child, a kidnapper, a child abuser, a molester. It was all these people. And there was a person, and he prayed Salah. He would still be better than a person who doesn't pray Salah or something like this. And that's categorically uh, wrong. Okay, that's not true at all. At all. Um, <coughs> I think... They may be quoting something from Ibn Qayyim or something, uh, where he's made some statement like similar to this, something like this. Uh, I think I read something many, many years ago. So it's been a long time, probably two decades ago, I read something. So I can't recall it exactly, but I think something along this kind of sentiment, not exactly the same thing, but similar, that kind of mentality. But that's clearly not how mainstream Muslims believe things so for example terrorists who kill people pray um and, and let's say most muslims let's say 95 percent of muslims don't pray five times a day probably yeah like most muslims in the world don't pray five times a day so most of humanity muslims and non-muslims combined in the world today do not pray five times a day okay whatever the percentage now, you could take a terrorist, like let's take ISIS. Now, ISIS who would butcher people and they would blow up mosques and they would rape women and they would kill children and they would kill, they, they, and they, they blew up. Do you remember when uh, they tried to, there was some attempt of an explosion in Medina, in the Prophet's mosque, they were trying to blow something up. There. This, this, these are terrorists like, like that, like ISIS, the absolute utter khwarij. But they would pray more than most of us. You see, they would pray, they would definitely pray their five salah. So they, according to this theory, would be some of the best people on earth, according to God, because most of humanity does not pray. So according to that theory, these people, and this, this is really an extremist ideology to think that so long as you pray, you could be a terrorist, but it doesn't matter. Um, any Muslim that's preaching that is unfortunately very dangerously brainwashed. 
And that kind of speech you have to be very careful of. Okay, very, very, very dangerous. Yeah, very, very dangerous, that speech. That said, I think the video that you... Uh, that IC Saracen spoke about here, about the Australian Sheikh. I believe that video is very old, and I don't think he was saying it in that context. And he wasn't saying it about terrorists. And he definitely, like, and from what I heard uh, from people, Allahu Alam, that he was, you know, he, he was regretful, very regretful about what he said. But he felt that I, he'd, you know, it kind of got out there now, and he didn't he he got carried away in a speech and i think from if i recall correctly i think what he was trying to do was he was trying to encourage local thugs and gangsters to um to kind of come there had been some kind of a killing and there was some kind of a funeral and after that he had got some of these people because in um in australia the muslims are have Unfortunately, as well, just as in certain other parts of the world, um, there is a huge kind of uh, thug and drug problem with the Muslim youth, that they have been drawn into that culture in dealing drugs and running the drug scene. So from what I heard is he was trying to get some of these people and draw them a bit close, as in if I can get them to just pray, then, you know, hopefully... By praying, they might do another little good thing, and that might just bring them a bit more to the mask and a bit further away from that and a bit further. And so if that was the case, from what I heard, then, he, you know, okay, that that, that intention is is uh, coming from a place of love. Obviously, the words were terrible, but and so I think from what I heard, he he said he got he said it wrong. He didn't mean to say it like that. Allahu Alam. Um, look. Any, you know, we all, you know, this is the thing. It's, yeah, we, we have to, yeah, we have to be careful. But at the same time, I get it, you know, we're humans, but we say things sometimes and we later on think, oh, damn, what did I say there? But we have to focus on preaching a message of humanity and love. And really the greatest thing, you know, for insan is and the greatest way you can serve and find God. See, like in the hadith that I cited, that where do you find God? You find him when you're feeding that hungry person. You find him when you're helping that person in distress. You find God with them. You visit the sick person, you find God with them. This is what the hadith said. These are the things that show righteousness. You see, like the hadith, like the verse of the Quran, Quran that we covered in a previous that this is not piety, you're pointing towards qibla or you're pointing towards here. You see, that bir is taqwa, mindfulness of God. And mindfulness of God, it's not just you see, just worshipping Allah, sure, you that's great, but you see, that's just between you and God. You see, that's you and God. But you have been put on this earth to be amongst people as well. So how do you behave amongst them? That's your true sign of faith. See, this is why if it was like, if it was about ibadah, the Prophet would have just sat in a room and just prayed. He would have, the Prophet ﷺ would have been, uh, you know, considered a'lal uh, abideen. But it, no, the Prophet's title is rahmatan lil alam. See, it's not about ibadah. The Prophet said nobody enters paradise by, uh, nobody succeeds in the afterlife by ibadah. He said it's by the grace of God. But it's about, uh, the Prophet was a rahmah lil alami. It was a mercy for the world. See, that's something. Ibadah is it's wonderful, but it's your thing. You know, it doesn't mean anything to anybody else. It doesn't even... It's nothing to, it doesn't benefit God, but it's just your devotion to God. It's a personal thing. But how you behave in the world, that's your measure of Iman. 